Well, sometimes we, we don't know what we got, right? right. Uh, other, about uh, three weeks ago, we had about uh, 15 uh, European left groups. Uh, they met and we trying to create a, a union amongst left groups and a lot of European groups. And one thing they kept saying is that we cannot have unity. We cannot have unity, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm saying that I know Europe always say that. The British said, I will never unite with the German. The Italians, I will never unite mm -hmm. with the... But see, in Africa, we can't say that we can't have unity. We have unity. We, a matter of fact, a long time ago, uh, they came out with a song called One Nation Under Group. Everybody was out there jamming. One Nation mm -hmm. Under Group. That was our desire for unity, right? So I'm saying that these do different groups, if they have a love for their people, we must come in in harmony because none of the people in our community create darkness. None of us created the war in Vietnam or the war in right. Iraq, Afghanistan. None of them create property. Yeah. Our contradiction amongst each other is, is trivial contradiction. And a lot of this egotistical consciousness is the consciousness of the devil. Right. And, and I'm saying because we come out of a collective reality. And we have to develop that collective reality. It's like uh, we got students that's going to medical school in Cuba. There's no competition amongst these students. They, this, they working as a unit. You know, right. matter of fact, uh, one of them just came here and said they only had one incident of a, a semi-fight. Mm -hmm. You know, but other than that, they working together, you know, as yeah. one. Yes. Yes, sir. And I hear so much on the street that we are blaming, uh, quote, unquote, the white man is what they're saying. Y'all need to stop blaming the white man. Uh, but yet and still, when we come together in unison with each other and try to teach each other, our children, of youth, the history of the African, they say we're blaming other people. Uh, I don't see a self-love for the African hitch history, uh, not even coming from ourselves. But, and that's very important for our children to know the history of Africa well, and, and why we were divided. Well, oh. let me say this, is that uh, uh, when you're dealing with consciousness, you have to have the proper uh, uh, measuring too. And for me, we're moving towards our most conscious and most correct position, right? Right. And what you can go by is like Martin Luther King. King said, I've been to the mountaintop and I've seen the other side. Mm -hmm. And he said, I might not make it to the promised land, but we as a people will make it to the promised land. Right. So our people are coming together Pan-African-wise, on the worldwide, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's like uh, Obama went to the slave castle in Ghana, right? Because right. the, the, the boss sent him there, right? Right. And, and when he came out of the slave castle, he said, oh, the African-American is inferior, so he must stay in America and continually let the, the white man whoop on his behind, right? Right. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I know many of Africans that left America, that's living in Ghana and Africa, and they, they live a greater reality uh, than they do here, right? Mm -hmm. So the enemy, he see us making that move back towards Africa, right? Mm -hmm. Even Obama's wife, when she went into the slave castle, she had a breakdown, yo, oh, I'm home, this is the place where they took me out of, she quiet her up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> quiet her up. Yeah. So I'm saying is that we're, we are moving towards home and, and we have the greatest unity that we ever have. Matter of fact, where we as, as a people is the door of freedom. And we just have to knock that door down. That's why the enemy gave us a president. They didn't give you a president because we was the largest minority. Right. We already see the Hispanics became the number one minority, but then we got the, the presidency. That's because they see that we had less faith in this country, and they have to try to say, please believe in America. Yeah. Uh, they said, boss. You keep telling me you're going to allow me to sit in the seat, right. but you don't allow me to sit in the seat, boss. You keep lying to me, boss. And I don't believe you, boss, so the boss has to 
finally let some Negro right. sit in the, the, the seat. But what we have to understand is that that was a hit on their institution of white supremacy, right? Right. And I'm saying that that's their, their instrument, white supremacy. But I'm saying that we can't go by their instrument, right? We know that there ain't no such thing as a white man and a black man. Right. Uh, people come from land. Right. Land is the right. basis of everything. Right. Right. Marcus Garvey said, a tree without roots is a weak tree, right? right. So you have roots. Right. And, and so right. the African in America are recon trying to reconnect to their roots of right. Africa. Right. And the enemy got to do whatever he can. To, uh, you're a Negro. You 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 at a right. low level. Right. You'll never be at a high level, right? Right. And if you accept the term African American, you'll be at a low level, right? Because right. there's no African American culture. There's no uh, 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 black culture. Right. I mean, you know, from land come culture, right? right. So they, you know, so I'm saying is that we are African people and stop that stupidity of African American. So I'm saying our people are moving towards Africa. I see it every day. That's what makes me have the strength that I have, the people reaching towards Africa. But at the same time, the enemy is wiping out every institution that associates right. itself that all across this country. Our business has been completely wiped out. Uh, we had thousands and thousands of these institutions. Now we can go back to count them on one hand. Right. You know, they, they want you to have no connect to your culture, right? right. You know, they want you to buy into European economy, right? It's just like a sister, she been out here working and, 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 and finally she loved the internet so much but she came into this shop and she started being around the pieces that reflect home. So she said, oh, I have a brother that I haven't found mm -hmm. since my father died. So she decides to look for her brother on the internet, and she found her brother on the internet, then she found a sister. But see, when you have symbolism that, that tells you a uh, uh, butt wiser, right. you know, you want a, a, a girl that's on the yeah. beach. Right. But when you have other symbols that tell you that you got homework, there's things that you need to do, you know, that's why we have to have proper symbols around us. That's why we have to have our culture around us. It ain't no fairy tale. It ain't no, I mean, it's a real reality. Our culture, every piece has some information. And it, it tells you about homework, right? And we got to, right now, we keep doing somebody else's homework. When we see these other symbols, when the enemy have all his symbolism, it have us doing his homework. But we got to get back to our people homework. Right, and one of the things, a brother, that uh, Colonel Mark McGuffey is doing the International Monetary Fund, mm -hmm. you know, which is that caters to the Europeans. He want to stop that and have what he call an AMF, an African Monetary Fund. And that's so important and that's one of the things I think that the enemy want to put a stop to and that's to hold us back again and keep us down. Uh, could you elaborate on that a little bit? Oh, yes. My brother Gaddafi. I, I love the man. Yes, sir. Yes, you know, uh, you know, because when I when I been into Libya, you know, I see nobody living on the streets. Everybody have a, a home, right? Right. You know, right. Uh, it's the only place in the business world where people don't beg you to come in by. They say, if you come in my shop, you come in here. Right. Everywhere else in the African world, people are begging you to come into their shop. Right. And see, at one time in Libya, we know Libya, because what is the song that the Marines from the halls of Malazuma to the <laughs> town of Tripoli, yeah, yeah. and they used to have one of the largest U.S. military bases. And if you know that they have U.S. military bases, you know what they're doing to the women around those bases. Prostitution, drugs, and, right. and all kind of sick acts, right? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, today, we know that they will, not only will they be doing it to your women, they'll be doing it to the brothers. Right, that's right. <laughs> your brothers will be involved in prostitution because of this sick U.S. military uh, uh, system, right? Right. And, and, and so Gaddafi changed that reality. You cannot touch a, a Libyan woman unless you marry their sister, right? Right. right. That's right you right. know, and, and, and I respect that. All these you women right. who say that I'm for women rights, 
They ain't saying nothing about supporting Gaddafi and the women of Libya. If you, it's the only society where women don't have to jump in the back seat of a yeah. car for a few dollars. Right. I mean, you know, if, if, a, if a woman had made that type of gain that they made into Libya, all women need to make sure that they any gain that you done made at women, you need to surround yeah. and support that gain right. and don't let them take that away from you, right? Yeah. Thank, thank you so yes. much, brother. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, we're here for the support of our brother, Commissioner John Wiley Price, and I really don't know what the charges are, and I don't care. It's just one of the things that they uh, trying to tie brother up. Um, what, can you give us a little enlightenment on, on uh, in support of John Riley Price? Well, Could see, you? I had already kind of went into that. See, John sometimes put on an African suit, right? Right. And, you know, he dealt with Kwanzaa Fest. And Kwanzaa was an uh, 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 insti uh, African institution. And, and, and anything that's connected to Africa is coming under uh, attack, right? Right, right. You know, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and so... They have to attack John, you know, and, and, and John, you know, sometimes third of a little way from home. That, you know, sometimes a, a, a child get lost. Right. And, and, but we saying, you know, <laughs> come home, John. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, I mean, you know. That's right, I understand. It's just like uh, on uh, uh, John's show, one of my militants, he said that he found me because he had, uh, uh, what's that song that, uh, Rooster Band Rose used to have Love Don't Get Lost on His Way Home. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said that uh, from listening to John's show, he came and found us, right? And so, uh, uh, um, so John, you know, help our people find their way home. Now we got to help John and protect him because I'm saying none of us have created darkness in our community. Our problem is with those who have created darkness. Right? right. Those who have created like the war in Vietnam or the war in Iraq or the bombings or bombings and they call it democracy. Here you you dropping bomb after bomb. Uh, you know, democracy. What kind of democracy is that? That's the same type of democracy we got on slave ship, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, here, we give y'all a chance to go vote after you raped us and terrorized us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> democracy is hypocrisy. Right, yes, right, sir. Right, right. Okay, thank you, brother, for that interview. We that thank you. Thank you.